Hey, gonna be trying something new for this video. If you would feel free to subscribe, it only takes two seconds. Just click the red button down below and it helps me out a lot. And if you don't enjoy the content, you can always unsubscribe later. Anyway, enjoy this video right now as this took quite a while to make. Hey everybody, what is going on? It's your boys, this is Dave. back to another episode of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Last time we beat Giovanni and Archer of Team Rocket, the admin and the leader. And this time, after receiving Sky Dash the ability to fly, we're gonna go into this tower. Sam, that Cubone's mom. That's right! Team Rocket keeps on going after Marowak so we can sell those schools they wear for profit. I think Cubone is still looking for its mother, even though she's gone. I just can't forgive that Team Rocket. Me neither. I saw Cubone heading into the tower a little while ago, too. I'll go look for it, and I'll keep an eye out for that Mr. Fuji, too. The ones who's been missing. Thank you, and be careful. Well, that is not a good thing to hear. I really don't like ghosts, but I've got to do this. Yeah. Ah, here's a funny thing. Nice timing. You caught most of that, right? What do you say? You wanna come with me? Yeah, sure. Th thanks, pal. It'll be a big relief to have you. I'll just let you lead the way, okay? Basically, he won't go up the tower himself, he has to have us go up for him. And this is the revenge of the tower for us. Because we've technically been up here once already. This time we've got the slift scope, so we can do a lot more here. And I want to spend a bit more time in this episode exploring the tower and battling the trainers we didn't battle in the first episode in the Fuchsia City Tower. It's not Fuchsia City, it's Lamentown. Town. What am I on about, Kappa? Anyway, there's a lot of chal channelers here, so let's do it. Ack, did you think there really are ghosts here? Is that a question? I, I could see one, two, three on the screen right now. Huh? Is it any three? What is that? The slift scope revealed the ghost's true form. So Haunter and Gasly's are in this place. Wow, that's crazy. So those ghosts were actually Pokemon? Yeah, so the slift scope reveals that the Pokemon in this place are Gasly's and Haunters that were kicking us out. So, we need to catch one of these. I, I fell through. There we go, we'll get a nice throw this time onto this Gasly. Using Great Balls today because it's a great day to be alive. That was such a cheesy line for me. But yeah, we're going up into the tower. And what do you know, Ninetales leveled up to level 31. We also got Gasly into our Pokedex. And it's added to our party. Speaking of party, actually we'll keep it in just for now. So now we're gonna have to battle this channel as soon. Never mind. We'll just pick up the item. Then we'll get rid of Gasly from the party. There's an item here, which is a star piece, we'll grab that too. Now there is other Pokemon in this place. One of them being obviously a Haunter, which we technically saw already. So we'll look for one of them in the tower. But before we do that, we've got a few battles to do and I'm going to change the lead to War Turtle for a bit. Because War Turtle has Bite. And Bite does wonders against ghost types. <laughs> Yeah, these are very good voice lines for channelers. And Hope has no hope against us with Gasly. So we're going to bite down on its uh, ghostly form. 
with our water tool. And we should easily win this battle. Now Nightshade, Ghost Sight move, does damage. Based on... I forget what it is. I think it might be level. Or missing HP. One and two. But it's a decent move for a ghost type to have. As Water Turtle levels up. Water Turtle's actually going to get a lot of XP here. And I plan on giving it a ton. Because... Believe it or not, one of the next gyms is Psychic. And Psychic gyms are a bitch to deal with. Unless you have dark type moves. Now, this channel of Patricia is going to be uh, recalling back to base after channeling that 7 second basically timer. And she's going to be basically executed. Now Toxic is an absolute big move, I'll be honest. I really want the TM for Toxic so I can just slide that onto Beamsaw. But yeah, it's a dead ghastly after one turn. That's the great thing about this place is it is pretty cheap and easy XP. So ghastly, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of ghastly sir. I mean a lot of ghastly. So, we'll bite down yet again. Interestingly enough, one bite kills a Ghastly, so we could kill at least 30 Ghastlies in this place, which is a good thing to say, because I want to be able to do that. I want to get as much XP as possible, because I know that we've got a Pokemon that's literally on the verge of leveling up and evolving, and I want to evolve it. That's probably the end goal of this episode, is to have it evolved. Because that evolved Pokemon is very strong. Anyway. Ghastly yet again coming out versus War Turtle. Now, you probably know War Turtle is poisoned. Basically, I'm trying to speedrun these battles, so if we kill the Pokemon quick enough, the poison won't take effect. That being said, if War Turtle just gets killed by Alps, Beating Gastly's, then I have no decision other than to let them kill me. Now, I'm at a stage where I might just let War Turtle die and use a revive on it. Purely being because we have the, uh, basically the tools to do so. Now, I also want to let you guys know Q Bone also spawned in this place as long as as well as the Haunters and that. I just th figured that would be a good thing to tell you guys. Anyway, channel here is our first battle on this third floor, I do believe. Actually, no, I, I don't have to use a revive. I know why I don't need to, because there's something coming up that's going to be very helpful. So, Ghastly. Yet again, I'm actually surprised we haven't battled any Haunters yet. Now, will this Ghastly be quick enough? us? Yes, it is, and it's going to kill us. So, who are we going to switch in to beat the Ghastlies? Now, the smart thing would be switching Eevee. I feel like I want to test if Dragon Rage is an insta-kill on these Ghastlies. Because they seem pretty weak. So, here we go. Suck Bunny. Wow, that is a dick move. Yeah, so you suck punch is very annoying. And no, Dragon Rage doesn't kill. But we still can Ember it down to death. And there we go. Easy win for our Charmeleon. Charmeleon gained a nice amount of XP. Halfway through level 32 right now. And what else can you expect from a... Charmeleon that's born and bred to do damage. I say born and bred, it wasn't bred at all. It was caught in the middle of Route 3 after sitting in a rush for about an hour or plus. You know, that sort of uh, patience you have to show in order to find a Charmeleon or Charmander. 
this before I actually caught it. And the, ch the interesting thing is, when you beat a channel in a battle, they completely forget they're cursed. Yeah, a bit weird, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, Challenger Jody versus me. Ghastly versus Ninetales. I forgot Ninetales is second in the party. Now, this would be a very interesting battle. If it weren't for the fact that I have Dazzling Gleam. And Dazzling Gleam would normally kill Ghastly's if it weren't for the fact that they're part poison. Yeah, I didn't even know that Ghastly was part poison. I thought it was only Gengar. Like, final form, like, changed to the typing. Like, I, I'll put it this way I don't check too often the typing of Pokemon. So I just try to go off with what I know. And Ghastly was one of them that I didn't realize was part poison. Anyway, Haunter is her second Pokemon, the first running with one of these. The tongue blah, 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 Pokemon. <laughs> Just is really uh, weird. Gonna suck a bunch of get a crit, who cares. Ice Beam just executes it. And that is a very powerful thing to know because it means that we can just sweep through these trainers with Ice Beam. Granted, I can only use it 10 times. But hey ho, away we go. TM for teleport. Now, this isn't the Gen 9. Are we in Gen 9? No, we're in Gen 8. It isn't the Gen 8 version of teleport which gives stat boosts to whoever comes into the battle. So, it's good to note that down. However, it does actually grant you a bit of an escape tool from buildings such as this. You can use it to just get out to the nearest Pokemon Center or the last Pokemon Center you use. It's a tool that I do believe speedrunners use in other games. They just use teleport to get out of dodge as soon as possible. Because it was easy for them to just RNG to run through, beat the trainers, then use teleport to get back to the Pokemon Center to save time. Like, I think it's this game in particular they used it in Pokemon Yellow map. Because obviously when you beat the Vermilion City Gym, you had to go back to uh, Cerulean. So in a sense, they didn't heal in the Vermilion City. So they basically beat all of the uh, SSN, all of the uh, <clears throat> gym, without using the Pokemon Center in the town, instead just healing with uh, health recovery items. Now, I feel that's pretty good in terms of speedrunning. However, I'm not that capable and considering this is Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, you just get teleported back anyway with uh, your rival. So I don't feel the need for using speedrunning techniques, because obviously it's quite easy to capture an Abra who has teleport built into its kit. That's how people essentially did it. Just teleport with the Abra, get back to wherever, and stay alive. Back to the battle. War Turtle is back alive because we went into that cleanse area and obviously will lowers lowers physical damage of a Pokemon, Bite's a physical type attack, therefore Bite is not killing this Haunter in one go. That being said, Haunter dies anyway because Haunter didn't account for the second Bite. Just the Chompers coming out, doing work. And War Turtle will burn a little, but we can obviously heal it off by going into the uh, cleansing circle of doom. Ghastly 
coming out yet again. Gonna be a uh, bitten. Will always is being a bitch, realistically. Luckily, it wasn't toxic again. Because toxic would have been an absolute pain. Sucker Punch. Now, believe it or not, this place actually used to be a very good uh, leveling up place for trainers on yellow, blue, red, leaf green, fire red because of the healing circle. And you're probably wondering why? Well, essentially, wild Pokemon in them games in this tower just appeared randomly, and it's always going to be a ghastly horner and the occasional Cubone slash Marowak. That essentially meant that you could just bring in a War Turtle or whatever and do what I'm doing and just level up your team because you could just switch in each Pokemon you wanted to use. You could even technically, if you had enough Pokemon, go grab the uh, EXP share which will go to that location soon enough and get that and then just uh, train your team up here yeah, and have a lot of ease because like all I'm gonna do is do that and boom healed up hearty pretty easy I think I've battled all of these trainers actually on the floor and wow an ice stone I could have actually have grabbed that before I evolved my ninth uh, well evolved my Vulpix into a Nine Tails and save myself 5k gold Oh well, I don't lose out on anything realistically. All it does is meaning. All it does is meaning. <laughs> Good words there, Ezra. 10 out of 10 on your English language. All it does is essentially mean I'm just uh, behind 5k gold. And it's not hard to get gold in this game. I'll tell you that. There's a part of this game which you're basically filled with eco, and I like that part of the game. And you won't find out why until we're at that part of the game. So, Ghastly, yet again dying to bites from War Turtle. And she has four Pokemon. One could only assume she has four Ghastly, or three Ghastly and one Horner. Because no one's going above the point of level of that chain of Pokemon. Ghastly's a dying in one hit. That's always a good sign. War Turtle is having a party. Do you know what would be an absolute nightmare for me? As if one of these Ghastly's had disabled. Disabled my bite. And that's just crude. Using Will O Wisp. As the last ghastly, that is just rude. Granted, it does mean you get an extra turn of living. But hey, I'm gonna scold you for that, because that was rude and very, very bad. So, down goes the scold. Down goes the ghastly. And down goes my uh awakeness. I'm getting tired. My throat's a bit, uh, all over the place today, I would say. And we'll grab this big pearl. We'll heal up our team. Oh, we'll avoid that ghastly as well. Heal up our team, as I say. Go through the rest of the floor. And go up to the next floor, which I do believe is the top floor. Now, this trainer we haven't battled, we might as well do so. And Disruption and Despair is the only worry that she is not going to be remedied from by losing to me. I'm going to destroy her team and cause a lot of despair with that. I'm talking a load of bollocks. That's me. And wow, we actually avoided a move from Ghastly for once. War Turtle coming in clutch. Keeping itself very nimble. Now Eevee leveled up and that's a Haunter. Okay, we're getting into a bit of an interesting battle now. 
Shadow ball. That's gonna hurt. It did hurt. Fight executes anyway. That hurts more than the shadow balls for them. And the last Pokemon is a Ghastly. I thought you would have a second Haunter and just be the top Don of this place. But she's gonna confuse Ray. Why confuse Ray? I think I avoided the first confuse Ray anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter, you're dead. Good night, Ghastly. You just lost to a War Turtle. And Venusaur grew to level 33, and Charmeleon grew to level 33. That's cool, Fire Spin. I, I'll take it because I do believe that is slightly better than Ember. It is because of the uh, dot damage. Yeah, that is a bit of a better move than Ember. Even if it doesn't look it on paper. Last item of this place is a revive. And that's gonna maybe revive my YouTube channel. We battled you before, let's grab this item. Three Ultra Balls. That's actually useful. Because we've got one last thing to do, and that is cue a very cute cutscene. And I do mean very cute. Big old. God intruder. Yeah, this one's even bigger than the last one. It's a 33. Use the thing. Thing you used last time. <laughs> Cue the cutscene. Slift scope activated. Oh. Yeah, I did say this was a cute cutscene. form of the ghost was the restless spirit of Cubone's mother. The mother's spirit was calmed, returning it to its kind and gentle nature. It appeared to the afterlife and disappeared. Cubone, you... You just came here because you wanted to see your mum again, huh? Sorry for thinking your mom was scary, Kubo. It's a very free eye. I don't want to leave Kubo alone like this. I'm gonna go take it home. Oh, and if there's someone named Fuji upstairs, do you think you could see him home too? I've got this. Are you not scared of the theory? Man, you're full of confidence, pal. You definitely seem dependable. What? You rescued Cubone from Team Rocket? When did you go and get that strong? <laughs> right. Well then. Guess I'll leave this up to you, it's our 33. Come on, Cubone. That cutscene always gives me tears. It is a very cute cutscene. It's one of the reasons why I say this is a very cute Pokemon game. And yes, it is very sad. But it's still a very integral thing to the story. And the character development of your rival. Because he takes that Cuban. Makes it his own. I thought I saw a Haunter in. No, just too ghastly. Okay, we're going back up here. Now I'm clearing out the rest of this place. And there's a guy here. 
Stop right there. We can be going fast. With that specter out the way, we can finally get to the top. You, you are the old geezer they call Mr. Fuji, right? You're going to be repeating your Pokemon research for the glory of Team Rocket. Ignore us all you like, we're used to it. We won't take no for an answer. You will help the boss whether you want to or not. Well, I think we have something to say to Jesse and James who want to essentially mess with the best. So we're going to leave with War Turtle and Charmeleon. Grant here thinks he can resist, so we're setting him straight. You better disappear, Twerp, or be prepared to fight. Q. Our third Jesse and James battle of this game. We seem to battle these two Team Rocket members quite a lot in this game. More than I remember. And they sent out the Weezing and Narbok combo that he's always done. Now, we're leading with a different combo for us. We have the Scolding War Turtle and the Fire Spinning of Charmeleon. And we're going to combo straight into one of these. I want to focus out the Weezing first, as Charmeleon actually gets poisoned. Weezing is a powerhouse. I, I'm more threatened of that than the Arbok. Yeah, I've focused a lot of power into it. Now, we're going to be hit by the poison on Charmeleon. That's fine. The Fire Spin's going to churn up the Weezing's health bar. And... I'm going to have to switch out our War Turtle if I want to get it to have some XP in this battle. Uh, I I have really bad resistances to poison. And the only good Pokemon I have against poison is Eevee, so... That is going to be the switch of choice for us here. Weezing is going to be the main target. We're going to switch in Eevee. Eevee should take some damage here, or focus off of Charmeleon, but it's not enough because the poison jab from Arbok is just going to kill. And that is annoying because I wanted to keep Charmeleon alive. Uh, hmm, who do we switch in? We'll switch in Ninetales. I know Ninetales is incredibly weak to poison, but she's still going to be able to list. I said she. He's still going to be able to do a bit of work, especially now that we're going to set up. A bit of a glitzy. Actually, no, I'm gonna set up Baddy Bad against Weezing. Wait, no, let me think about this. No, it's gotta be the uh, other one because they're using special type attacks. Doesn't gleam, can gleam through the competition. Glizzy Glow, maybe it will be enough to kill this Weezing. It is, okay, that's good. Dazzling Gleam, I know won't do enough damage to kill the Arbok, but I don't care. Ninetales leveled up. And what else is going to happen this battle? War Turtle's going to level up as well. Dazzling Gleam comes out. It doesn't do much. Arbok used Glare. Who's it going to paralyze? Okay, Ninetales got paralyzed, that's fine. Because Eevee's just gonna kill. Kind of obvious that's gonna happen. Uh, we can Ice Beam here. Onto Arbok. If it doesn't... Die. And it didn't die, okay. Eevee does work. Blair. Probably gonna be on Eevee this time, and... Both our team are paralyzed. Jesse's an absolute pain in paralysis, but it doesn't matter because Ninetales does not get stopped in its tracks and does manage to kill the Slippery Snake. Jesse and James lose. What do you want? You regret this. It amazes me how I can just change my voice just like that. Uh, seriously again? 
Looks like Operation Stealthily Kidnapped Fuji is a bus then. Don't you think I know that? It'll be fine. We'll just have to help out with the takeover to Swiftco in Saffron City. Looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again. Oh, we're left with Fuji standing here. Oh, uh, and who might you be? You came to save me from Team Rocket? Thanks, but I didn't even notice they were here. I was too busy trying to calm the spirit of Marowak. I think Marowak's spirit finally has left us. I must thank you for your kind concern. Follow me to my home. It's the Pokemon house at the foot of this tower. So is the 33. Your Pokedex quest is one that requires strong dedication. Without deep love for Pokemon, it'll be a hard task to complete. Oh, well, I messed that sentence up, but I'm not sure if this will help you, but I'd like you to have it. We get a Pokemon flute from Fuji. This is actually very helpful. It goes into our bag. Upon hearing the Pokemon flute, sleeping Pokemon will spring awake. Try using it if you, you ever find a sleeping Pokemon. Well... We'll have to do that in the next part. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like down below. Subscribe me out here if you want to. And I will see you guys next time where we'll be doing one of two things. Peace out.